Another important reason why the price of food is so high for so many is because we've actually started to burn food in the petrol tanks of our cars. Biofuels is what it's called when you burn food um, to make fuel. It can be made out of wheat, corn, sugar, and soy. If you mix these biofuels with regular petrol, it gives out less um, polluting emissions. Ca um, yeah, cars giving out emissions, as you probably know, is, what, is one of the factors that causes climate change. Recently, the government um, and governments all over the world started to get pretty worried about climate change because people like you and me started jumping up and down and making lots of noise about climate change, and we've been telling the government to do more to reduce emissions. So the government got pretty excited about biofuels because they thought that we could reduce pollution. And that's fine, but the bad thing is that corn and wheat, palm oil and soy are really important in making heaps of food products. So wheat is in a lot of things. If you look at the back of it, the, the next packet of Tim Tams that you buy, you'll see that wheat and sugar in, are in the ingredients. So when we grow food and then use it in our cars, that means that there's less food to eat. So this makes food that is left over for eating more expensive because there's less of it. So while trying to cut how much we pollute, we're accidentally taking food away from people who desperately need it. But it's not all doom and gloom. There are some biofuels that can be grown on land that's not needed for food. At Oxfam, we think that biofuels that use dry, unfertile ground is a better choice. At Oxfam, we work in 26 countries supporting poor people. We help farmers grow more crops and earn an income so they can buy food for their families. I'm going to show you a couple of slides from our programs. This is um, in East Timor. We're helping farmers to grow papaya crops so they can eat the, some of the papaya and sell the rest um, in local markets so they can get um, an income and then buy more food for their families. In Sri Lanka, we're helping people to grow vegetable gardens. Um, when people have a vegetable garden, they're not so reliant on buying expensive food at market. We don't just support farmers, we also support people to earn more money so they can buy more food. Um, this is a picture of a worker making Nike in a factory. Many people making sports shoes like Nike and Adidas live in poverty even though they're working full-time in paid jobs. While Nike spends millions of dollars sponsoring sports stars like Tiger Woods, the people who earn Nike earn as little as $2 a day. On this kind of wage, it's pretty hard to buy good food, let alone pay the rent and school fees. So we support workers making Nike and Adidas to get enough money to be able to look after their families and to be able to afford food. We write to the companies and ask them to respect workers and pay them enough. So today I've talked about a few things. I've talked about the causes for food prices getting higher. There's climate change on the one hand that's destroying food crops with hot weather and storms. And then there's biofuels that's using food to make petrol for our cars. In addition, many people around the world, like sportswear workers, aren't earning enough money to be able to afford food. The good news about this mess is that there is something you can do about it. The first thing you can do is send a message to our Prime Minister that Australia needs to reduce our pollution. You can send a message to Kevin Rudd Think, and tell him that you think that climate change sucks and that Australia needs to do more to reduce emissions. If we keep polluting like we are today, we will end up destroying food crops and even more people won't be able to afford to eat. I've left a petition at the back on the table and your teacher could perhaps get one and I urge you to sign it um, and send a message to the Prime Minister. The second thing that you can do is try to watch what you throw away in the bin. Um, half of all of our food ends up in the rubbish dump where it becomes toxic. So that's half of everything you buy, all the food you buy, you throw away. Has your mum ever told you at the dinner table like to finish your dinner because kids are starving in Africa? It always sounds a bit like silly, but it's actually um, what's happening. And the more that we throw away into the bin, um, the more expensive the rest of the food becomes. 
We can, take, we can help take pressure off food prices and off the environment by being more careful about what we throw away in the bin. The third thing you can do is to send Nike and Adidas a message. The next time you go to buy a pair of sneakers or a jacket from Adidas or Nike or Puma, take a second to think about the person who sat in a factory in China, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, who actually made those sneakers. For example, when you buy a pair of sneakers for $160, the worker only gets about 80 cents. Feel free to buy sneakers still, but just think about sending a message to Nike and telling, telling, tell them to make sure that the workers are getting enough money. Again, I have a petition out the front, which I urge you to sign. Nike and Adidas actually do listen to people like you and me. In the past, they've made changes after they've received a lot of protest letters. Lastly, um, something you can do which is um, easier um, but equally as important is to buy fair trade um, tea, coffee and chocolate. Fair trade means that the farmers get a good price for their coffee and their cocoa beans and getting a good price means that they can then afford to buy food for their families.